Hello fellow saints. Today we're going to be looking in Roman at Romans 10:9 and to see why Romans 10:9 is not the gospel. Um many Christians like to turn to that verse. I've seen it very often. I've um even seen it in gospel tracts where they add Romans 10:9 in the back. And they'll usually add it with the sinner's prayer. Um but a lot of Christians ignore the context of Romans 10.9 and why Romans 10.9 should be avoided as a salvation scripture. Um, we'll see, we'll be looking at the Word of God, the King James Bible, why Christians should be avoiding it and why it's not the gospel. So if you have your King James Bible with you, you can turn with me there to Romans chapter 10. Romans chapter 10, and I'll start off, and then I'll get up to uh, Romans 9, and it reads, Brethren, my heart's desire and prayer to God for Israel is that they might be saved. For I bear them record that they have a zeal of God, but not according to knowledge. For they, being ignorant of God's righteousness and going about to establish their own righteousness, have not submitted themselves unto the righteousness of God. For Christ is the end of the law for righteousness to everyone that believeth. For Moses describeth the righteousness which is of the law, that the man which doeth those things shall live by them. But the righteousness which is of faith speaketh on this wise. Say not in thine heart, who shall ascend into heaven, that is to bring Christ down from above? Or who shall descend into the deep, that is to bring Christ up again from the dead? But what saith it, the word is nigh thee, even in thy mouth and in thy heart, that is the word of faith which we preach. That if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shalt believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. Now if you notice how Paul starts the epistle, sorry, how, how he starts the chapter, he says that my heart's desire, he says, brethren, my heart's desire and prayer to God for Israel is that they might be saved. So that's who he's addressing this to, chapter 10, it's to Israel. It's not to the Gentile. He's talking about Israel and he wanted Israel to be saved. It was his prayer. It was his desire to God that they might be saved. And when you read all the way up to verse 9, it's still the context of how who Paul is addressing it to. It's still Israel. And many Christians like to turn to this verse and think it's just a salvation scripture for for in general, for just anybody, but they completely ignore the context of who Paul's addressing this to. And you have to remember that Romans 9, 10, and 11 are parenthetical chapters about Israel. He's talking in those three chapters specifically about the nation of Israel. And Romans 10, 9 is not the gospel. First of all, there's no blood atonement. You don't see where Paul mentions that Christ died for their sins. It doesn't, he never mentions it as being the gospel. And it was specifically for the Jew. Dispensationally, Romans 10.9 is for Israel. It had to do with the Jew and his faith. And it was during the time of the book of Acts, during, the, during that transitional period. Jews and Gentiles today in this dispensation of the church get saved exactly the same way. Salvation by believing the gospel, which is the death, burial, and resurrection, and trusting Jesus Christ as Savior. That is how Jews and Gentiles today get saved. And plus, you don't see this verse anywhere else in Paul's epistles. This is actually the only time where we see this verse. You don't see anywhere else where Paul says to confess with your mouth and believe that Jesus Christ was raised from the dead. That this is the only time he mentions it because it's a very specific, um, very, very specific uh, way for a Jew to be saved. And it was during dispensation, during the time of the book of Acts. But this is not the gospel. He never calls it the gospel, as I've said. The gospel is actually found in 1 Corinthians 15. We'll read that. It says, Moreover, brethren, I declare unto you the gospel which I preached unto you, which also you have received, and where ye stand, by which also ye are saved, if ye keep in memory what I preached unto you, unless ye have believed in vain. 
For I delivered unto you, first of all, that which I also received, how that Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures, and that he was buried, and that he rose again the third day according to the scriptures. That is the gospel. Verses 3 and 4. And Paul is reminding them that he's that that's the gospel he preached unto them. He calls it the gospel, and it says that they receive that gospel. He doesn't call Romans 10 9 the gospel. That's not the gospel. So if you use this verse, Romans 10 9, um, you need to stop using that verse because it's not a universal um, verse to be used for anybody so they can be saved. And anybody that's preaching, Romans 10, 9 as a gospel today in this dispensation is accursed because that's not the gospel. And Paul gave some severe warnings in Galatians chapter 1. You've maybe read in verses 6 through 8, he says, I marvel that you are so soon removed from him that called you into the grace of Christ onto another gospel, which is not another, but there be some that trouble you and would pervert the gospel of Christ. But though we or an angel from heaven preach any other gospel unto you than that which we have preached unto you, let him be accursed. And uh, those are some very severe warnings from Paul. Anybody who preaches any other, other gospel is accursed. And this is why we don't turn, we don't use Romans 10.9 um, for today because there's no... Um, blood atonement there. Paul doesn't call it the gospel, and it was specifically dispensationally for the Jew. So thank you, and God bless you.